Ну что, можем начинать? Да, конечно, давайте начнем. Добрый вечер, коллеги. Меня зовут Марина Давлетшина. Я менеджер факультета коммуникации, медиа и дизайна НИУШЕ. И сегодня я рада представить вам наше событие в онлайн-формате, такой некий день открытых дверей магистрской программы International News Production. Я хочу сразу отметить для тех, кто сейчас с нами в онлайне и тех, кто потом будет смотреть это в записи, что 20 апреля у Олега Аркадьевича, академического руководителя программы, пройдет день открытых дверей в офлайн формате это значит, что мы встретимся с вами в Москве и пообщаемся вживую, поэтому отмечайте этот день в календаре, мы сделаем вам рассылку, в которой вы пройдете короткую регистрацию и узнаете все подробности. А сейчас я готова уже передать слово Олегу Аркадьевичу, академическому руководителю программы International News Production, и сегодня у нас в гостях... Виктория Поликарпова, руководитель главной дирекции информации «Спутник International News Wire». Здравствуйте. Марина, спасибо. Добрый вечер всем. Мы перейдем сейчас на английский, поскольку, как вы знаете, программа наша англоязычная. И также я попрошу вас, как только возникают какие-то вопросы, чтобы у нас был не только монолог, но и диалог, задавать эти вопросы в окне чата, и я буду транслировать это Викторию Анатольевну. So, uh, hello everyone, and I'd like to welcome you to our next sitting of the um, international news Uh, production master's program lectures, and uh, I'm Oleg Dmitriev, I'm the supervisor of the program. Uh, we've been very successful with our second year students, and in a couple of months we'll have the first graduation, hooray, so to our program. And um, uh, yeah, today uh, we would like to talk to you about the basics of the news, where the news come from, and how we generate news, how we write them, and how we Uh, double check them so that the journalists and uh, 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 readers and consumers would uh, would be happy. Uh, so that's why I invited Victoria Polikarpova, uh, who is the head of international news desk at Sputnik, a news agency in Moscow. That's a part of Mir Rasiya Sivodnik group. And uh, Victoria is in charge of the news wires on, in several languages, which is English, Spanish, Arabic, and Persian. Um, and before uh, I give the floor to Victoria, uh, just let me, um, uh, let me give you some words, uh, some uh, basics about the program. So who we are, so what we do, and what our uh, objectives are. So as I said that we launched our program in uh, 2019. And uh, so we are trying to teach all of you guys fresh and innovative approach to the news. We uh, experiment with all the new formats, uh, with all the new trends in the media. And the beauty of the program is that you don't have to Uh, you don't have to have an experience in the media. You don't have to be a journalist because uh, we invite uh, the professionals from all spheres like linguists, politologists, um, specialists in marketing, just everything. As long as you are comfortable with international news, as long as you're comfortable with the media, so you don't have to be experienced journalist. As long as you speak English, and English is a must uh, for us to know. That's why just uh, we are interviewing people um, who are uh, planning to come to study with us in Moscow. That's a little bit uh, unusual phenomenon because in Moscow, in the heart of Russia, we have an English speaking master's program. But uh, we think that we've ac accumulated the experience that lets us uh, teach all the innovative things that came in international broadcasting from Moscow. So uh, the curriculum spans for two years and these are the disciplines that we have, like classic disciplines and some brand new things like introduction to alternative medium, 
uh, presented by Alexei Nikolov, who is the managing director of RT television channel. News markets and agenda setting. This is something that uh, Victoria teaches and uh, she will tell you later about it. And we have uh, some courses on visualization, data journalism and so on and so forth. And uh, new media is our training part because uh, this is something that you can try with your own hands. So we have uh, numbers of practical exercises and you'll have a chance to have some more practice in one of the international newsrooms, not just in Moscow, but in other, um, uh, in other cities. We hope, we do hope that it will be offline practice because, well, we have some COVID restrictions, uh, but in spite of that, uh, our students had practice with RT and some uh, with RT with Sputnik with other news entities. So that was last year. So uh, also you will have uh, a choice on what to choose. And so, uh, yeah, this is how you will practice all your skills um, uh, in one of the newsrooms. And uh, you will also have a choice to choose the form of the final paper. Because uh, with us, you don't have to do the final research just like they do in many universities. You may come up with the media project and you may develop it, and it will be um also a form of graduation so you have wi uh, wide opportunities of what to choose and uh yeah just if you dial international news production hsc you will be able to see the uh, final page of the program and you have uh, you have my email and the phone number of the person who is the manager of the program his name is andrei borachenko so uh, he will answer all your questions uh, regarding the application. So as soon as you have a question, please uh, drop me a line, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right, so that, that is the brief introduction about the program. And now I'm giving the floor over to Victoria. So again, welcome and just uh, tell me what does uh, international news mean for you? So just why did you decide to come to International News for your career? Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Oleg, for this kind and uh, interesting introduction. And I must say that uh, it's an honor for me to be a part of this uh, news program that Oleg is supervising in the Higher School of Economics. So I really think that the new media formats should be studied and more people should be uh, should be aware that you can become a journalist, uh, even if you're not a professional journalist yourself. Still, uh, getting back to your question. Uh, well, <laughs> for me personally, and, uh, international news journalism means that uh, it's the way for me to be aware of what the heck is actually going on in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I've been in the news business since 2006, uh, after I've graduated from, from the Moscow State University and uh, after I had some uh, international programs in Europe and in the United States. So basically, uh, I wanted to choose a sphere that uh, could uh, let me have a spacious mind and open mind while following all the world trends. So be it in politics, in geopolitics, social sphere, business, culture, technology, if you are fond of reading about these things. If you're fond of reading news, then you could probably try yourself in writing them too. And you can, could also pursue a career in uh, professional international news journalism. So for me, news journalism is like a, a litmus test. It's like, like a, a filter, uh, an indicative test that uh, through which um, the essence of information uh, goes, it is filtered, and so after this, it can be presented to the public. Uh, it is the most pure, um, if you say, if you want to say pristine form of the information presented to the public. Um, and I can give you some tips uh, for you if you want to become a professional news journalist. Uh, first of all, you have to be uh, balanced and impartial, because this is what news is about. 
always yeah, try to so how, how to be impartial in this world where with lots of conflicts so that's the issue <laughs> That, that's a good question. So I always, uh, I'm always saying to the, to the young editors, to the young journalists coming to a newsroom, try to put yourself at a distance from what you're reporting. Try to be a merely a good transmitter of information, an accurate transmitter of, of information. Because for other genres, such as opinion genres or uh, uh, columns, uh, uh, you should pursue some some other branch of, of journalism. But for news journalism, you have to distance yourself from what you're writing. So your aim is to put into the right wording and contextualize what's happening around you in the world and what you see with your own eyes. And it really depends on your experience and on your level of professionalism, what words you choose. So the, the words do matter. Uh, you should always uh, be ready to quickly adapt to the new environment. You should be tech savvy because you always have to use different uh, means of communications, different messengers, and yeah, you know you have to you have to learn to um, to technically te technically support yourself in order to to quickly uh, report news. Uh, you have to be always politically correct and you have to practice ethnic and religious tolerance. Um, and you should just love covering uh, lots and lots of events. Um, first come to my mind, major international events, such as summits, uh, events concerning more just one country, uh, political dialogue between the countries and political blocs and alliances. Uh, you should always look for major statements of the governments, of some officials of the countries that can have effect on other nations and change the world. So whenever the information you get changes the world, mm -hmm. it should always, uh, you should also love uh, covering such things as acts of terror, activities of terrorism, extremist, extremist organizations in different countries and, and regions. Um, uh, you should look for major accidents, such as plane crashes, explosions, train crashes, involving multiple victims sometimes and injured. Uh, also coverage of natural disasters, such as earthquakes, tsunamis, landslide, uh, protest movements coverage, civil society unrest conflicts, not only mil uh, military and war conflicts, but all kinds of conflicts um, involving two or more sides. And deaths of famous people too. So this is a big list, but it's not, of course, a final list of, of things that can be covered uh, by the news reporter, by a news journalist. So the ability to gather and report news and closely watch this thing things be being quickly picked up by other media organizations this is what makes me personally happy when when I'm I'm at work, when I'm at what I do. Yeah. So just for the people who are listening to us, they know what news is, but they don't know what Newswire is all about and why we need it. Yeah, because uh, just we have news, we have news uh, items, news bulletins. But what is Newswire in general? Who is it for and why is it very important to have a Newswire service for all the international news agencies? Mm -hmm. Yes, a Newswire is, uh, is a thing uh, which you simply very rarely see for yourself unless you're a professional journalist, professional uh, subscriber. Uh, not only, only journalists subscribe to the newswires, but uh, academia, uh, diplomats, uh, education uh, professionals, such as uh, professors and students, different libraries, uh, researchers and analysts and political scientists. So compared to uh, um, B to C principle of a website or of a newspaper article or of a TV or radio broadcast, and a newswire is a typically professional thing, and it is a B to B product, so a business to business product uh, that is um, actually 
uh, sold uh, for money to subscribers to different subscribers around the world, and this this um, allows different media organizations to republish information as is or fully, or just use any part of information that we have specifically gathered for them. So the main dis the, the distinction between, for example, a website publishing news and a newsware publishing news would be, of course, in the format the news are presented, in the speed, and uh, also in the style the info is submitted to the reader. So the fact-based fact approach uh, a news agency while the website approach is wider, it may include opinionated articles where the author of the text clearly illustrates his or her position, and it can be subjective. Uh, the news text and news wire can be compared to um, a meat loaf inside the burger. So you always have the burger with the meat, unless you're a vegetarian, of course. So the meat is the main part. It's like the juicy and delicious and it's the essence of the burger. So these um, are big ingredients, right, for our news dish, right? Sorry? These are major ingredients that you put into that, the Yeah, of course, of course. You, and, and, that, and then uh, on this piece of meat, other media organizations can, can put uh, a leaf of lettuce, some mustard, some pepper, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, uh, uh, if you are a broadcast journalist and you're writing a news program for the uh, peak hour uh, program for the radio, you can uh, subscribe to the Newswire, get some news first, and base your broadcast on our information. And uh, the more exclusive information they get from the Newswire, uh, the better for the subscriber. So, um, uh, in, but in order, in order to be... Um, for, for your information, for the news of information to be, to be quoted, the information should be reliable. And here we come to uh, to some of the elements that we uh, and practically, I think, all of the news wires, all of the news agencies around the world find um, worth having, uh, worth basing your work on. on. So uh, the following principles: uh, accuracy, impartiality, as I said responsibility for every word you publish, speed, and all those four phenomena make up for reliability and trust. So uh, accuracy, mm, it means uh, that you have to report truthfully and be very accurate with facts. Do not manipulate facts. Uh, and you also have to use reliable sources of information. <laughs> and so what sources can be uh, considered to be reliable? Uh, so, like, there is a big hierarchy uh, based on the degree of uh, reliability. Uh, first and foremost, it is the exclusive information a reporter can gather from the scene. So, for example, if uh, a newswire correspondent eyewitnessed a blast, for example, uh, or, uh, you know, a, a landslide, or it has uh, immediately come to the place where, uh, I don't know, there's been like a shootout between several people and police. So this is like the best thing a Newswire reporter can get. Uh, the second thing is when you have a direct quote, when you, for example, interviewed some official, some expert, some um, a source with a direct, a direct knowledge of the matter. And sometimes our journalists have to use unnamed sources. So you, you, when you quote someone who has this, you know, secret knowledge of the matter, but for security reasons or for some other reasons, uh, you do not quote their name or title, but you trust this, uh, this guy or, or girl, you know that they are in position to tell you this uh, kind of information. And sometimes uh, the sources are called the diplomatic source told Sputnik News Agency or uh, a government official uh, with knowledge to the matter uh, told Reuters News Agency. So you can always um, uh, decide for yourself uh, when to trust and when, when to have this kind of information uh, quoted as, as, as a source. Um, oh, uh, yeah, oh, uh, just... 
let's yeah. take this ship in Suez Canal. So yeah. I got stuck there. So what were the actions of your team to cover this story? Yeah, th that's a very good example. And this is uh, actually one of the uh, good, good coverage uh, from, our, from our side, because I think there's, uh, it's been uh, almost a week since, since it, it's been stuck in the CS canal. canal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've, we've managed to get uh, as many information, as many exclusive information on the ship stock as possible. So first of all, we had our one source in the administration of the canal. So in Egypt, there is like uh, an official body who is uh, supervising this kind of stuff, but they didn't want to, to be named. So we got like when uh, when the first ship, ships after the uh, Evergreen got stuck, uh, we got information on the technical uh, technicalities, technical stuff, whether it has a breach or it doesn't have a breach. Um, we got in touch with the, with the Egyptian uh, officials. We had, um, we had even information from from the from the witnesses who has been, uh, you know. Uh, cruising on a small ships uh, at that time, at that particular time, uh, on a on a Suez Canal, uh, we got information from from the marine authorities of different countries. We had interviewed experts, uh, ex ex marines, ex naval uh, officials who had been in this kind of situation uh, before, because you know in history we had we had. Uh, uh, a round of, round of episodes on that matter, but not, not this uh, kind of trouble, of course. So, uh, I've, you know, I have a list of them. I think we had um, about 120 different news, exclusive news on the Suez Canal. And this is because of the teamwork. Uh, this is because of something that we could gather both from the correspondence in Egypt from the correspondents of, in other countries in the Middle East. We had our team of Arabic speaking journalists in Moscow. And we also had an international department monitoring all kinds of open source information just to be aware of what, what's happening. And we also had, had correspondents who, who could just pick up the phone and get in touch with the people with, an, of the knowledge, uh, with the knowledge of the matter. So basically a good coverage is when you can have the exclusive information first, but you should all also be very accurate with facts. And whenever you uh, do a mistake, an error, do not hide it. Just, you know, this is one of my advice to, to the students and, and to the young journalists. Uh, this is something you should correct. So the reputation of a news organization is rested also on your ability to uh, to know your mistakes and to review your mistakes if you make one. Um, so yeah, that was a good coverage. Yeah. So uh, just uh, during the talk, during the coverage of the breaking news, uh, you have to talk to a lot of people, experts, eyewitnesses, and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. how difficult how difficult is it? to talk to people during the times of pandemic, because uh, I'm sure that the pandemic has put a lot of stress on the media guys. Uh, is that the case? Yes, of course, it is the case. And, you know, I'm, I'm always uh, envy, I'm, I'm jealous to people who are saying that they have been relaxing all the time during the pandemic, because for us journalists, it's been a hectic time when we had to work harder. And we, uh, um, a, lo a lot of us, a lot of us had to just master new ways of conducting interviews. It's um, of course uh, different kinds of Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp, video messenger uh, conferences and interviews. And of course, it was very difficult to get in touch with people because they were just, uh, especially during the first weeks, they were just. Uh, not willing to talk. And in this case, uh, my advice uh, was just to build a more 
personal relations with your speakers. For example, if you know a press secretary or, of a diplomatic course or of an embassy uh, who you worked uh, uh, with before, or who you interviewed and talked to before, and, and this, this time they're not just picking up on you or just you know saying, no, no, not at this time, sorry, I'm not giving you an interview. So you have to build a more sensitive approach. And just to start with a phrase that, how was your quarantine day today? You now, sometimes this just helps. It could be a good start of the interview. But uh, compared to uh, a normal uh, time before the pandemic, so basically what I, we've learned that the interviews got shorter. So you had to really ask questions that are really important to you. And you know, you had to think more on the wording on how you, you know, formulate your sentence, your, your question. Because sometimes just one, one answer to your question could make a flash, you know, a flash, a very important and uh, breaking news uh, feature. Um, and also we had before the pandemic time, phone interviews or Skype interviews were like maybe only 15 to 20% of the time. And during the coronavirus pandemic time, uh, Zoom interviews were sometimes the only option, even if, uh, if it is uh, a head of state. So uh, we just talked to, like, to you about this. Uh, Alberto Fernandez, the president of Argentine, uh, who used to give us uh, you know, face-to-face -face interview at the very beginning of pandemic, uh, during you know the the next couple of uh, months, he said, "No, let's just do it on Zoom." So you have to make stable technical connection in order to have this. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just um, we had also to invent uh, different genres. Uh, we had to invent different digests, of, of, so you had to repackage the information that you get. You have to repackage the, the news formats that you present to the subscriber because, you know, when everybody is following the uh, COVID-19 COVID coronavirus news, we had to think of something that is new and fresh, some in innovative things. So we uh, launched uh, a specialized news wire uh, dedicated especially to, to COVID-19 news but in a very delicate and uh, sensitive manner because it's a it's a sensitive matter itself so whenever you interview a doctor you should always think about that you're covering a medical drama maybe sometimes because uh it concerns uh health of people so and still lots of people lots of your speakers who you interviewed before went through professional uh, crisis during the time of pandemic. And so you have to always, uh, you know, uh, uh, think of it and, and, you know, not forget about it. So uh, doctors in, in emergencies room and patients in the, in the hospital wards have all went through kind of transformation. Uh, so how's your quarantine day has been today? It's a very good start of the interview. Yeah, uh, and just when you talk to people, sometimes people might make mistakes or sometimes uh, when you have tons of uh, information, uh, some figures might be not adequate. So my question is how to verify the news effectively, how to verify all the upcoming information um uh, to the agency is there uh, are there any successful techniques well yes uh the best source of information is exclusive stories so i always say that uh in order to be the first and and, and just just the one you have to interview someone that uh nobody has ever done before but if not this is not the case then you have to you know, reduce the number of mistakes by simply verifying uh, the reliability of your source. You have to check for the reputation of the source by simply Googling and you know, to reading about the media outlet that you're going to quote. Uh, 
uh, to check for, uh, check the bio of the author of the article, if it's a column, for example, or an opinion article. Uh, look out for uh, connected coverage online. So who else had uh, already published this kind of info before, if any? Uh, check out the multimedia, the photos and videos on the topic to gather more information about the news uh, information you're going to use. Um, you should all also check whether the website or social media account you're going to quote is an official one. So, you know, sometimes you can see the uh, blue uh, check, check button uh, in Twitter, on Telegram, and uh, on Facebook. Uh, but some official accounts are not checked with this sign. And in this case, you have to scrutinize information, you have to do your own research, and you have to look whether this kind of uh, this account has, has been quoted before. Um, you should always very carefully verify the titles of the persons, not to get you know, in a funny situation when you call a minister an ex-minister or a diplomat or a business official. And this, this is something that the speakers just do not like. And the subscriber just won't tolerate it from, from a reputable news agency. You have to verify, sorry? No, go ahead. Yeah, you have to verify names, of course, how to spell them correctly in different languages. And this is especially uh, difficult when you have several languages, several newswire languages. Um, so before you send your text to your editor, be sure you don't want to fall a victim of, of uh, false news uh, and you know not checked, not accurate news. Um, what else? Um, yeah, you should ask, also ask your colleague to double check your text, you know, you know, because the second pair of eyes is always better than just one pair of eyes. And sometimes when, for example, your story contains figures and is about business or is about economies, you can consult your colleagues in the business department uh, just to, you know, double check because there is always... Uh, a lot of specialized information that you can not simply check for yourself. Also check for logic. So I'm always trying to teach students and, and young journalists to reread your text and to see if there is a clear logic of uh, telling the news. If one uh, paragraph clearly uh, goes into the other one and you can read the text for yourself and decide. Uh, this this is kind of uh, you know list of my advice for fact checking. Yeah, well, we've mentioned the boats in Egypt. Mm -hmm. What other coverage are you personally proud of? Just what other news do you remember? So, what, or, or just what are your impressions about that? Just any in history or just in recent days? Uh, in, in the news that you covered, uh, just okay. for the past year for the past couple of years. Yeah, well, uh, in you know, I think it was like three weeks ago. Uh, or there were Afghan talks in Moscow, mm -hmm. and you know, everybody was really looking forward for this kind of conference. But there was like zero information, zero information in open sources uh, on how exactly is it going to be organized, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there was no official confirmation. So we managed to get uh, from all possible sources official confirmation that it, it is going to take place from the Russian side, from the Russian foreign ministry, that yes, Moscow is going to host this kind of conference. And it really was a big and a very important conference because it was mediated by Moscow between the Afghani officials and the Taliban. So, and there were international observers taking part in this conference. So practically, all kind of all, all kind of information that we we could gather was quoted by Reuters, by CNN, by big media organizations in, in the Middle East. So we've managed to to be number one in this kind of, of coverage. Uh, also, like going back deep into the history, like to the background of of things, Iran nuclear deal, 2015. It was one of the uh, you know first days of uh, 
Geneva, Geneva uh, event uh, covering uh, the historic deal on the Iran uh, nuclear deal. So we had just two correspondents uh, on the scene and the rest of the team was working from Moscow. And we could, uh, you know, uh, get in touch with all the US, um, European, uh, Syrian, Iranian, uh, Chinese delegates, but they did not want to talk uh, uh, by the name. I mean, they, they, they never wanted to be quoted. So we really have, uh, really had to uh, to make uh, lots of work to make them talk, and we published lots of information on anonymous, on anonymous source, just as I have just told you about using anonymous source. And at first, we uh, actually were afraid that this kind of information will not be quoted because it is from an unnamed source, and this is the like big big event, but there were no one who covered this to this extent. So we had information on the uh, draft agreement. We were the first one to publish the draft agreement between the, the countries uh, on the Iran nuclear deal. And this was like the most valuable information that a journalist could get. So we were really successful in that. Um, well, our agency also was very uh, quick in, in all the Syria talks and in inter-Syrian talks when the Moscow was mediated and negotiated between the Syrian side uh, and the uh, opposition side. So whenever it happened in Astana, in Brussels, uh, in Moscow, in Sochi, we had uh, tons, tons of information that were, you know, the breaking news in all other media organizations. Mm -hmm. So our KPI was, you know, reached, we reached our goal. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and now you also teach at uh, International News Production Program, and I really thank you for that. So uh, just how can students prepare themselves for our program? That's one question. The second one is uh, just uh, what uh, impressions do you have about this effort to teach international news at one of the leading Moscow universities? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, information leads to transformation, the transformation of the society, of people's minds, uh, of policies, of politics. So if you're not inspired by being informed, you will expire by being transformed. Um, this is something that uh, I have, uh, uh, you know, read somewhere a very long time ago, and I'm not sure what the source of information is, by the way. Uh, but this is what inspires me uh, personally. Uh, as I see it, if you cannot leave out interesting facts or ideas that are happening, discover uh, that are happening around you that you personally have discovered, and you want to bring it to the attention of larger audiences than just your friend or your neighbor or your mom, then maybe you would like to pursue a career in, in news journalism. Uh, my course is centered around this approach. Report what you see, report what you hear in clear wording. Just everything you see with your own eyes will be uh, very successful. What you report may transform the world in which we're living. So just be a part of it. And answering the second questions on how can the future students uh, prepare themselves for the studies of international news. So basically my advice would be just to start reading news from different sources. And what you can do is you can compare the styles, compare the agenda, compare the formats and also the news angles and uh, this what will give you your own news judgment. And the news judgment notion is very important to, for a professional journalist. When you actually know, you, you can decide very quickly what is news and what is not news. Um, also, uh, well, uh, when reading the news briefs, 
uh, you can also try to reformulate the, for the main idea. And that's what you know, makes, you, uh, makes your horizon uh, broader uh, as if you were the news writer. Try to retell in your, your own words when you hear the news briefs, when you uh, listen to a radio news program and try also to grasp the idea of the whole text, which is simply reading the headlines, for example. This is one of the best, uh, best exercises for students. Just read the headlines and try to grasp what is the whole text about, and then read the whole text and decide whether you were right or not. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Victoria, thank you very much for coming. And uh, so the recording of this uh, will be available on YouTube and on the charts of International Professional Program. So I do hope that you guys are finding this interesting. So, and uh, you may send the questions to the chart of the program. Uh, and uh, uh, later on, either me or Victoria will be very happy to answer them. So uh, stay in touch, follow the news about International News Production Program. And Victoria, thank you very much again. For... Thank you very much, Oleg, and, and thank you everyone for listening to me. I hope I've made myself clear. <laughs> yeah, so it's been great. And yes, stay in touch. And the most important thing is to be healthy. So goodbye, and uh, we'll be around. Thank you. See you around. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.